storytelling cafe and today's mystery guest will be announced by the amazing the fantastic <laughs> Bubba C. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, young at heart and heart to the young. Today we have a man that needs no introduction, yet I'm giving him one. Internationally known, loved by all, envied by few, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, John Rowe, 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 Rowe. Fantastic. <laughs> well, it would appear that I'm here, and therefore I have to tell some stories. What? Well, how many of you saw, either saw or saw a picture of the partial eclipse of the sun yesterday? No, you, you, Teresa, you saw, you, you, you saw it. I am, um, I saw the picture of it. I didn't actually get it. You saw a picture of it, Louis. Well, a long time ago, but in my lifetime, and my hair was in fact white at the time. And my beard was white, but I had a few more teeth of my own. There was an eclipse of the sun and the first place, a full eclipse. I think it was like the late 90s or early 2000s. And uh, the, the first place it could be seen was in Lowestoft. In, in, in the UK, the first place in the UK it could be seen was in Lowestoft on the east coast of England. And I was booked to tell an eclipse story. Now, I didn't have an eclipse story. And I started driving very early in the morning with my youngest child. Hoping that by the time I got to Lowestoft, a story would have come to me in the way that stories arrive. And one indeed did come. And it is from the very beginning of time. When the cosmic weavers, no, the cosmic spinners, in fact, had taken the last thread of darkness and spun it into black thread. And the celestial weavers, had taken that thread and used every last bit of it to weave the cloak of night. And so we had day and we had night. And all the animals had been given their fur and their wonderful coats. And all the animals, had been, all the birds had been given their feathers. Now the animals were pretty pleased with that the lion i mean with its great mane well the male lion at least lioness didn't need extra stuff she was magnificent anyway but the uh, the, the, the uh, so so the lion had its well and, and did that lion thing waving its wane around everywhere hey, really happy and, and the elephant with that great trunk zip, 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 zip. It enjoyed itself. It used to suck up water and then spray it at whoever was nearest. And, I mean, it occasionally got, you know, picked up a bit of food and put it in its mouth with a trunk. I mean, you'd, when people would, I mean, imagine being an elephant. You know, your parents couldn't say, don't use your fingers. All right, I won't use my fingers. I'll use my trunk instead to eat with. Anyway. And, uh, and the skunk had that magnificent white stripe down its back. Attracted people to it so it could, make, it could really make them smell. And the birds, well, the peacock. Well, again, the male peacock, because the peahen didn't need this extraneous stuff. Had its beautiful tail. You used to look at its reflection in the water and think, I'm really magnificent. I am magnificent. Uh, and, 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 and the butterflies, you know, that, that uh, you know, with the swallow tail and things, and everything was happy apart from Raven. Raven had brighter colours than all the other birds put together. 
and it was always the center of attention now i know erica for instance likes to tell stories and when she's telling stories she likes everyone to be listening to her and jasname likes when she's telling stories to be the center of attention and have everyone listening to her and baba c definitely likes everyone listening to him when and uh, likes to be the center of attention when he's telling stories even mike mike fagety no when you're telling stories michael you like everyone to be listening to you and louis sometimes you like to be the center of attention do you you just want to be um but there are those amongst us that are really shy and Raven was a bit like that. So why is everyone looking at me? I don't want to be bright colored. I don't know. I want to be dull. I don't want everyone looking to me. And so one night he couldn't stand it anymore. And he flew up and he took the cloak of night and wrapped it round himself. Well, he flew up to the mountains. stayed away from people he'd pop in occasionally might pop down to the tower of london and uh, vancouver island they like vancouver island ravens but it was hot it was hot all the time it was daylight all the time now for those of us in gray uk in the winter when it is damp and cold we wish it would be bright sunshine all the time. Actually, when it's bright sunshine all the time, we still complain and we say, it's far too hot. Because we were all trained by farmers to complain all the time. However, eventually people got fed up with continuous daylight. I think we need some night. Who can fly up to the cosmic weavers and or the celestial weavers and ask them to weave a new cloak of white? And the sparrow tried, but you know, sparrows they they they're good at singing and they're good at flying around in flocks, but they can't fly that high. And the Skylark tri tried and just got to that sort of top where Skylarks, have you seen Skylarks where they just fly, they're above a field and they're, they just sit there hovering and making that beautiful song. And then the Swallow tried and it went higher and higher and higher and higher. And it got to the celestial weavers. Said that, uh, huh? Could you give us a bit more black cloth? Could you make a new cloak of night? Is that okay with you? I, I don't mean to disturb you. I mean they they look really funny because they were they were weaving stars into a white background, and they said, "Look, swallow, we'd love to help, but can you see what we're doing? We're weaving stars into a white background. Stars aren't supposed to be onto a white background. They're supposed to be on a black background, but we haven't got a black background to put it on because we ran out of black thread ages ago. In fact, when we made the cloak of night, you better to go to the cosmic uh, cosmic spinners and see if you can find, see if they can give you a bit of thread. We'd willingly. You bring us some black thread and we'll weave you a new cloak of night. And so went to the cosmic where the celestial spin, cosmic spinners. I never remember which is which, but, you know, it's an age thing. And said, uh, could you, could you give me some black thread? I need to take it to weavers to get a, get a new cloak of night they, they're they're weaving onto a white background even but they're stars and the, and the spinners said oh no we'd love to but we ran out of darkness if you could get us some darkness we could make do some black thread and 
Then you can have some black cloth and then we can have a new cloak of night. So Swallow came back down and gathered all the animals and all the birds together and explained the problem. And I said, well, what we need is something, a bird that's really strong, that can fly really high. Well, Louis, you can guess which bird that decided could fly really high, that was really strong. What would it be? I can't hear you, Louis. It's kite. A kite. A kite would be good, wouldn't it? A kite can fly really high. Red Especially kite. Red, red kites, kite. aren't, aren't they? There's red kites around your way. But even bigger and stronger than a red kite is an eagle. And so they decided eagle could fly up there. But there was a problem. They wanted eagle to fly up and push the moon over the sun. But eagle's got a quite sharp beak. And if eagle pushed the moon, it might burst it. So it needed someone to stand on eagle's head while eagle flew up there and hold its hands out and push the moon. Well, the lion was the first to... Uh, to volunteer, but the eagle didn't really trust the lion. They, uh, they said, you're a lion. You're going to fly up there. We'll probably do the job okay, but I'm going to be about a foot off the ground and you're going to jump off and eat me. The lion said, got to give it to you. That's probably true. I hate to admit it, but yeah, I would. And the elephant said, I'm strong. I'll push it. Can you imagine an elephant standing on an eagle's back, sitting on an eagle's head? It would squash it. No, it is. Yeah, because, yeah, so then there's a little voice. I will. Who's speaking? There's a little mouse. The mouse said, look, I will. I can do it. And everyone laughed, apart from Eagle, who quite liked the idea of a mouse sitting on top of his head, especially if he had to go a long way. So he flew up, mouse on top of his head. They got next to the moon. He said, okay, mouse, hold out your hands. And they pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed, but nothing happened. So they pushed, and they pushed, and they pushed, but nothing happened. So he was, okay, we'll take a, a run up at it. Well, he's got wings, so it's more a fly up at it. So they flew as fast as they could at the moon with Mousy's hands outstretched and it just began to move. You know, you know when you're pushing a car out in the mud and you roll it backwards and forwards and gradually, then there's that magnificent moment when it starts moving and you just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and, and the moon was rolling and 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 it rolled in front of the sun and for a few minutes there was complete darkness and it was just enough darkness to allow enough black thread to be spun to be woven into a new cloak of night and everything was back as it should be but just every so often and I think the next one is about 2090 is the complete, the, a complete eclipse. The mouse gets on top of the eagle's head and flies up and pushes the, sun, the moon across the sun so we never run out of black thread again. Ah, oh, right. Uh, 
it's always difficult to try and remember your own stories. <laughs> it's much easier when it's been a story, a proper, a proper folk tale that's been told for hundreds of years because it sort of comes in ready-made into the memory and you might have to adjust it a little bit. I think... Um, so I've been very rude. I haven't got the chat up. Ah. Uh, Ah, Jazz Nome likes my elephant. <laughs> right. Uh, so this is this is a very a story I've been telling for years and was told a long time before me. And the version I tell I told rather I got from a book of Irish fireside ta tales by Kennedy, who was a Dublin book bookseller, and. Uh, because I know it's not just the adults I say this for, because I know both Jazz and Ame and Erica uh, are interested in, and Khmer are interested in old folk tales. And sometimes they get told it by their grandparents and sometimes they read them in books. And uh, this I read in a book and I took it out. He, he lived in the 1900s and he, he's, he was a Dublin bookseller and he wrote down all the stories he'd been told by the old people in County Wicklow in Ireland. It's called Jack and His Companions. But I've got to, I, I thought, I've been telling this for years and I think sometimes you just need to freshen up a story. So I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. You can tell me afterwards. And it's from way back in time, when my hair was dark and my beard was ginger and all my teeth were my own. And all the animals could talk to each other and chickens still had teeth. And there was a boy called Jack and he lived with his mum on a farm and it was a bad year and it was bad harvest and next to nothing to eat. And Jack went, Mum! You know how children go, Mum! They, 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 they use that tone of voice wherever they are. What's, what, what, what's, uh, what, how do you say mom in that tone of voice in India, Erica? How do you go, ma? how do you do it when you whine and you want something from your mother? What do you say? Mama. Mama. And do you hold it? Go, Mama. Mama. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, yeah. So, Mom. Give me a cake and a jug of milk and I'll be off to seek my fortune, which means make a lot of money. And off he went. But his mum said, look, Jack, take half a cake and half a jug of milk and I wish you luck. Or a whole cake and a hard, whole jug of milk and I won't. And of course, he took the half a cake and half a jug of milk and set off down the road. Well, he'd hardly gone down the road when he saw walking in front of him someone with a bear on a chain, a dancing bear. And the man was hitting the bear. And Jack was really sorry for it. That is no way to treat a bear. Ring through its nose, chain on the ring. And, and he followed the man. And that night, he saw the bear put in a tiny cage. And he waited till the man went to sleep. Jack crept up the cage. And he got piece of metal and he broke open the lock and he opened the door and let the, the, the bear out and he took the chain off to bring in his nose and the bear followed him down the road a little bit when they were well out of sight of the man and the cage they sat down and you know exactly what the bear said. Thank you. Can all unmute yourself for this. Thank you very much. Thanks. For I would have much. surely died. And where do you have much. to be going? Much, much. 
for I would have surely died. And where do you happen to be going? Well, I'm off to seek my fortune, said Jack, or at least live to the next harvest. Do you mind if I come with you, said the bear? Not at all. And they set off down the road. Well, they came to a town, and there was a group of children. They were bigger than Erica, and they were smaller than Babasi. And they were chasing a dog through the town, and tied to the dog's tail was a kettle, and they were throwing stones at the dog and stones at the kettle. And as they ran past Jack and the bear, Jack shouted now, and the bear uh, and, and, and the bear roared as loud as it could. What noise do bears make? Give me a big roar. <laughs> Louder than that, all unmute. I want a big, big roar. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of like a pussycat roar. That was. <laughs> <laughs> I want a roar that would frighten someone. Frighten the we devil himself. Well, <laughs> you know what happened. The children ran off in all directions. Frightening it was, as frightening as that last, as that last roar you all did. Jack got the dog, undid the kettle from its tail, and you all know exactly what the dog said. Thank you very much. 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 Surely... Much. Die. Die. And where do you happen to be going? We're, going. Off, we're off to seek our fortune. Or at least live to the next harvest. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> do you mind if I come with you? With you. Not at all. Oh said Jack, and they set off down the road. Well, they were, so they, they decided, it was, they were getting a bit hungry. And there wasn't any, there was no food stalls about, and, you know, there was, a, there was no little street, there was no street food, and there was no McDonald's, and there was no Pizza Hut, and there was no, ah, oh, there was nothing about. And uh, so they all sat down next to a pond for something to eat. They were behind a tree and they couldn't be seen. You know, and Jack was eating his cake and the dog was eating a bone. And the bear was looking for honey. Found some. When along came a man and he had a sack and that sack, in the, the sack was sort of wriggling and there were sort of meows coming out of the sack. And that man, you know what he did? He took that sack and he dropped it into the pond to drown whatever was inside. <gasps> Quick, said Jack. And the bear leapt into the pond and got a great, it's great bear claws and pulled out the sack. And they emptied the sack on the ground and there were four little kittens inside. And Jack and the bear had saved their lives. And Jack gave the kittens some, some of his milk some of that half a jug of milk he was given at the beginning of the story. And you know exactly what the kitten said. Thank you very much. For we would have surely... Much died. And where do you happen to be? Going. We're off to seek our... Going. Our children. Or at least live to the our next... Our Harvest. Do you mind if I come? Harvest. With, with you. you. Not at... With you. All. Said... All. The kittens. No, no. The kitten. Oh, no, no. Jack. Main character. Main character. Jack. 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 <laughs> and they set off down the road. Road. Well, 
They'd hardly gone down the road when running in front of was a fox and in the fox's mouth was a cockerel. Quick after him said Jack and the dog started chasing the fox and the dog was running, the fox was running, the dog was running, the, run, the fox was running, the dog was running, the fox Fox was running and the fox was near the dog was nearly on the fox. The fox dropped the cockerel, went back to Jack. The cockerel got on the dog's back, went back to Jack. You know exactly what the cockerel said. Thank you very much. But I would have surely much died. Died. Where do you have to be Man. going. We're off to seek out fortune. fortune. Or at least live to fortune. the next harvest. Do you mind if I come? Harvest. With, With you. No, no. With you. Oh. Said. Jack. Oh. And they set Jack. off down the road. A little oh, bit relieved yeah. to know. At this point, the cloak of darkness was dragged across the sky. <laughs> and it was time to rest. And they all lay down the clearing in the woods, all except for the cockerel, who went to sleep in the branch of a tree. When they'd hardly been asleep, when the cock started crying, what noise do cockerels make? <laughs> Louder than that! Louder than that! Cock -a -doo -doo. And even louder than that, because I did work in the circus and there is a rule of three in the circus. L even louder than that! Cock -a -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> What's all that noise, said the bear? It must be morning. Said the, said, uh, said the cockerel, look, there's a light over there. It must be the sun rising. Oh. That's not the sun rising, said the, said the bear. That's a candle in a cottage window, and it wasn't there earlier. I know about candles and cottage windows and people. I'd prefer to stay away with them after I away from them after my last experience, but we'd better wake up Jack anyway tell him what's going on so they wake up jack and jack woke up all the other animals and jack decided they'd better have a look in the cottage and see what was going on so they crept down the cottage as quietly as they could and they looked in through the window and there inside were six robbers and one was eating chicken's legs. And one was drinking lemonade. And one was counting gold and silver. And Jack said, when I give you the signal, make as much noise as you can and it's time to unmute everybody and it's time to make a noise are we unmuted noise, are we noise, ready to noise, make a noise barking and the bear started roaring and the kitten started meowing That was frightening. That was so frightening. The robbers ran out the back door and went and hid in the forest. Well, Jack and his companions went inside and made themselves comfortable. But up in the robbers, in the forest, the robbers started complaining. <laughs> I just started my chicken's leg, said one. I, I, I'd hardly, I'd hardly had a sup at me. Lemonade, said the other. Think of all that gold and silver, said the other. And Robert, she said, look, I'll go down and I'll walk down to the cottage and I'll find out what's going on. And he crept out the cottage and he crept inside. It was so dark he couldn't see his finger in front of his nose. He, could, he was smelling something. He could smell cat's onions frying. And there's a... But that was from the cottage next door. But he, he crept over the fireplace. And he tripped over the dog. Oh, man. 
Um, and the dog bit him all up his legs. And he ran into the kitchen. Little cat kittens jumped up and scratched him all down his front. And he was running out the door and the cockerel dropped down from the top of the door and pecked him all over his face. And he ran to the, he ran outside to, to, there was a lovely barn outside and he ran there, you know, and the bear had been stretched out because it first had a good night's sleep when it wasn't in that little cramped up cage and it was just stretched out in the straw, really, I mean, you know, really in luxury. But when the man came, the bear just got his foot and kicked him so hard. He flew all the way back to the forest. Whatever happened to you, said his friends, it's like this. I crept down to cottage and it was so dark I couldn't see my finger in front of my... Nose. Nose. I nose. Nose. I crept inside. And it was... And I crept... I could smell cast onions coming from next door. And then... Um, well, what happened there? Yeah, trouble is, if you change a story, you, you forget it. Yeah, I... I know. I, I got to the fireplace and there was an old woman carding wool. That's getting a, a brush and brushing out the sheets all re getting ready to spin. And 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 she got that got that brush and she stuck it all up my legs. Is that right? Is that what happened to the fireplace? Yes, yeah, it was is. Dog. The dog put them all up the leg. The dog. Who thinks? Who agrees with Baba C that it was a dog? Hold up your hand if you think it was a dog. I agree with Baba C. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> yes, no, yeah, it was the dog. I'm going to do better this time. I ran into the kitchen. And there was a shoe mender mending shoes, and he got his needle, he scratched me all down the front. Is that right? Nope. Jasnami, what happened in the kitchen? Unmute Jasnami and tell me what happened in the kitchen. Erica, what happened in the kitchen? Uh, uh, Teresa. I just forget. Yeah, it's okay. I've forgotten. That's why I'm having problems right now. Teresa, what happened in the kitchen? I don't remember. Oh, my goodness. But I something happened with the chicken. No, no, that's not yet. It not wasn't yet. It. There's no chicken in this story. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, Mike, what happened in the kitchen? The kittens got hold of him. Now the kittens, all those little kittens that have been saved from drowning, jumped up and scratched him all down the front. Right, anyway, he was running out the door and there was a little demon on top of the door with a three-pronged fork. And he jumped down and he stuck it all over his face. Is that right? No. What happened when he went out the door, people? The cockerel. Marilyn, Marilyn, you've the been cockerel. sitting quietly. The cockerel. The cockerel. Who said the cockerel? cockerel. The cockerel. That was Jasname and Erica said the cockerel. Fantastic. Third time lucky. Right. Now I'm going to prove. Thank that. you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to prove that adults can get it right sometime. I ran to the big barn with all the straw in. And there was a man with a big hammer. And he hit me so hard, I flew away back to the woods. Is that right? No. Jasname, what happened? <laughs> okay. Erica, what happened in the barn? Um, wow. bear, I think bear. You think the bear? Do you do you agree with Jasname, bear. Erica? Bear kicked away the bear kicked away. Yeah, and Kamaya, I keep forgetting to ask you, oh. Kamaya, because I can't see you, but I can see your square. Uh so the bear, the bear, well, whatever happened. Those robbers never went back to the cottage again. And Jack and his companions live there in luxury for the rest of their life. And if you, if you had been passing, if you had knocked on the door, you'd have been given something to eat, 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 eat. something to eat. 
Drink. Drink. And if you were very Drink. tired, a bed to sleep. 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 Oh, right. Oh, thank you. Now, I do this every time because just, oh, oh there's Baden here. Baden, Baden what's it? What, uh, Baden is making rude signs at me. Shout boo at Baden. Boo. Boo. <laughs> no, Baden, we like you, Baden. Don't we like Baden? We really like Baden, don't we? Yes. yes and absence makes the heart well. grow fonder, yeah, Baden. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Louis, Louis likes Baden. So at least one person likes you, Baden. No, the rest of us do. The rest of us love you, Baden. We all do. We all love you. I'm okay. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm wittering on because I'm trying to think what to... What to uh, what to do? I think I might do a poem. And my face. You want me to do a poem, do you, Louis? I do. Ah, shall yes. I do a poem? Shall I do a poem about ghosts? Yeah. Okay. He seemed a very average ghost, the kind you see straight through. Created for the DVD too perfect to be true. His hair was long, his boots were tall, the buckle shone on his belt, his jacket was made from satin and his plumed hat pressed from felt, his spurs and sword they clattered as he marched across the street but all he got was insults from the people they did meet. Get out of the way you fool, they said, and where did you get that hat? And why don't you get your hair cut and just look at the state of that? They didn't like his manner. They didn't like his dress. And whatever he did, like walking through walls, failed too totally to impress anyone, to, one at all except Rosie, who played all day on a toddler and her own, who gazed at the road from a window for hours, who everyone else thought was odd. Amazing, she thought when she saw him. But is it really so sad how those people out there treat that poor man like that? I do think they're ever so bad. So she ran down the stairs in an instant and she ran right into the night and she searched, searched through the crowds on the pavement who had never seen such an odd sight. On the one hand, the ghost getting jostled. On the other, Rosie and tears pushing past giants in her night clothes and her being only 10 years. That's sort of halfway between Erica and Jasnami, isn't it? Um, she pushed past the ones who were laughing. She pushed past the ones who looked mean. She pushed away to, through to she looked at, the last place the ghost had been seen. And then she saw, she glimpsed him inside the old shipyard wall that hadn't been used in her lifetime that was crumbling and not safe at all. So she ran across girders and stairways and she leapt over chains, bricks and poles and to the crowd on the pavement that watched her. She sent a shiver through each of their souls. The loud mouths were no longer laughing. They no longer swaggered and swore as the building was collapsing around her and she fell. From the shed's second floor, below her was metal and rubble and a reinforced concrete post and the crowd all thought she'd had it. But Rosie remembered the ghost, and the ghost knew all about Rosie, how she didn't have one real friend, and the person to blame for her falling was really himself in the end. So he ran through the piles of paper, and he ran through the last standing wall, and he stood with his arms stretching outwards, exactly where Rosie would fall, and he caught her like she was a feather, and he set her gently down. Now everyone wants to know Rosie, and the ghost is the toast of the town. Whoa! Wow. Now we're um, getting we're getting near the end, but have you written this poem? Pardon? Have you written this poem? I wrote the poem. Yes. It, it's too nice. Thank you very much. It's, uh, I tell you, for those, for those young writers that are out there, I tell you how I got inspired to write that. I thought I wanted to write, I, 
oh, I wanted to, there were two things came into my head. One, I wanted to write about a ghost. And two, I wanted the central character, the heroine of it, to be someone who was an outsider, someone who didn't have any friends. So I started with that idea. And I was, I was working at school that day and I was driving down to school and uh, I, I'd be, the first part of the poem popped into my head. So I pulled up and I wrote it on the back of an envelope. And then I, uh, and then I'd, I read the first half to some children in the classroom. They all gave me ideas. But those of you at school, you know, when your teacher gives you an idea because you're stuck, you write a little bit and you get stuck. You, you sort of so yeah, yeah, that's nearly it, but that's not quite. And you throw out the teacher's idea. And what that does, that leaves a gap in your head for another idea to come in. So there was a gap in my head for an idea to come in. And I dug through my, what I call my Fanny Fanshawe handbag. Now that makes no sense, but I'll tell you why I call my head my Fanny Fanshawe handbag. When I worked at Colchester Art Centre, which is an old church, which is, in fact, it's the church that Humpty Dumpty was written about, but that is a completely different story. And I, there, and we used to put on art exhibitions, and there was a wonderful old woman. She was one of the last of the Victorians. She used to come in the, the art centre and... Uh, and she lived in like a little sheltered house and a little flat around the corner from the art centre. So at the end of the exhibition, I would carry her paintings around. And she did mosaics, beautiful mosaics. You know what a mosaic is, don't you? Erica, do you know what a mosaic is? It, it, uh, no. It's a picture made out of little bits and pieces. Sometimes little bits and pieces. I know. Are fine. Yeah, so... And so you build this up like this. So anyway, she made these beautiful mosaics and she sat me down and she gave me tea in these, this delicate china. Now, I don't know why old people always give you tea in delicate china. It's terrifying. You're terrified. If you're like me and very clumsy, you're terrified of dropping it. And she said, you know, John, the trick to making mosaics is if you're walking down the street and you see something on the floor that might be useful, you pick it up and you bring it home and you pop it in the dish. And she had this little glass dish that was full of bits and pieces. And one day it might be the perfect thing. For instance, I was walking down Colchester High Street and I saw this piece of broken watch in the gutter. So I bent down and I picked up and she was a grand Victorian lady that wore these big hats and had a silver top cane. And I had this vision of this grand Victorian lady picking up bits of broken watch from the gutter. So when I got home, I popped it in the dish. And five years later, I was making that mosaic there. And she pointed to a picture on the wall and it had a bit of a gap in. And I took that piece of, bro of broken watch and I thought, that would be perfect. And I popped it in and it was perfect. And I looked at it and it was indeed perfect. So ever since then, I've thought of my head as Fanny Fanshawe's handbag, where I pop memories into. And when I get stuck on a piece of writing, I scrabble around inside it and pull out a memory. And so I was stuck with that poem I didn't, I wanted the guy, I wanted something terrible happening to the ghost and something terrible to happen to Rosie. And I remembered, I found, I scrubbed around in the Fanny Fanjo handbag and I pulled out a memory. And I remember walking at midnight by the river near Colchester. And there was an old broken factory. You know, the old factories when you see buildings that have just got the skeleton of the building left and the girders. And I looked up and there was someone walking across a girder at midnight, and I was terrified in case they fell. It seemed to take an age for them to get across. And they got to the other side, and I breathed a great sigh of relief. But 
that image I put in that poem of the shipyard, of the ghost in the shipyard and the girls and everything, all came from that memory I pulled out of Fanny Fanshawe's handbag. So you can each, you needn't call it a Fanny Fanshawe's handbag. You can call it whatever you like in a memory box. But when you get stuck on a piece of writing, scrabble around inside and pull a memory out. That's enough of that sort of lecturing and lessons. <laughs> we, all right. Shall we do? Shall we do one more story that you can join in on? Yes. Well, last, yes. Sorry, sorry. yes. Okay. Well, last time, last time I was on, I just I must blow my nose. Excuse me. Uh, Last time I was on, I think I did the story about the mouse that got fatter and fatter, didn't I? Yes, you did. Thank you very much, Louis. So this time, and this is one of my favourite uh, joining in ones, it's going to be about the old woman and the pig. It's a very old story that was first written down in about the 1700s and was in a chapbook. Now... Chapbooks are tiny little books that chapmen, the peddlers, people who walk from town to town used to sell. And I thought the word had disappeared until I went to America. And I went to a poetry festival. And I suddenly found that all the poets had these little th thin pamphlets and they called them chapbooks. And that's what's happened with language. A word might disappear in one country and pop up somewhere else. And that has nothing to do with this poem, this story. And this is from way back in time when mountains were taller and rivers were deeper and forests were thicker. And there was an old woman. And she, had, she had next to nothing, really. She had one silver coin. Now... Yeah, it was. A, I, I, in fact, got a sixpence. Is that, is that a sixpence a real? Because, or is it an old shilling, Michael? I, I found anyway. I, 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 I carefully got, got. Oh, there's a sixpence. Anyway, doesn't matter what it is. It's a silver coin, and all the adults have done this, and probably some children as well. When you've done, you know, you you want that little bit of change to catch a bus with. And you haven't got enough money. And you scrabble around down the back of a sofa or the back of a chair to look for it. And <laughs> it was like that. She looked everywhere. She looked under the sofa. She looked behind the books. But she, had, she only owned two books. And she looked up between those and it wasn't there. And then she looked up on a shelf and then she lifted up a cushion. And it was like all those things. It was in the place where she'd looked first. And there she found the silver sixpence, and she went to market. And you know what she bought? She bought a pig. And she's walking home with the pig, and she came to a fence. The only way across the fence was across a stile. She got over, but the pig refused. Now, there's a few actions in this, so can you do a bit, bit of this, bit of this, bit of wiggling of the fingers? And can you bash your knees? Right. We'll tell you when. It'll be obvious when that, that happens. And there's one word, um, but that'll be obvious as well. Anyway, the pig refused to get over it, so she went to the dog. She wiggled, wiggled fingers, wiggled. Bash your knees. Dog, dog, bite, pig. Pig, you won't get over the stile, shan't get home tonight. Now, every time it says night, so you just remember to shout out to night when it comes up. It's okay. Anyway, the dog would not. So she went to the stick. She would... Stick, stick, beat, dog, dog, won't bite, pig, pig, you won't get over the stile, shan't get home to... Night. 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 <laughs> anyway, uh, the stick would not. So she went to the fire. She would. Uh, 
fire, fire burn, stick, stick, won't beat, dog, dog, won't bite, pig, pig, you won't get over the stile, shan't get home to... No! no. Nine! <laughs> Nine! Anyway, the fire wouldn't. So she went to the water. She would... Water, water, quench, fire, fire, won't burn, stick, stick, won't beat, dog, dog, won't bite, pig, pig, you won't get over the stile, shan't get home to... No. No. Anyway, the water would not. So she went to the ox. You know what an ox is? Mm. Well, yeah, Jasnami and Erica will know what an ox is. It's like a big animal with big horns sticking out. People used to use it to plow the fields with and carry things. So she will. Ox, ox, drink water, water won't quench, fire, fire won't burn, stick, stick won't beat, dog, dog won't bite, pig, pig, you won't get over the stove, shan't get home to... Good night. 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 No, wouldn't. So she went to the butcher. Ah. She will. Butch, butch, kill ox, ox, won't drink water, water, won't quench, fire, fire, won't burn, stick, stick, won't beat, dog, dog, won't bite, pig, pig, he won't go over the stove, shan't get home to... No! No. But she wouldn't, so she went to the rope. <laughs> she went! Rope, rope, hang, butch, butch, won't kill ox, ox, won't drink water, water, won't quench, fire, fire, won't burn, stick, stick, won't beat, dog, dog, won't bite, pig, pig, he won't go over the stove, shan't get home to... Night. Night. Right when she went to the rat. Long tail. She went. <laughs> rat, rat, no rope, rope, won't hang, butch, butch, won't kill, ox, ox, won't drink, water, water, won't quench, fire, fire, won't burn, stick, stick, won't beat, dog, dog, won't bite, big pig, you won't get over style, shan't get home to. Night. Rat wouldn't. She went to the cat. She went. <laughs> Cat, 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 rat, rat, won't no rope, rope, won't hand, bunch, bunch, won't kill, ox, ox, won't drink, water, water, won't quench, fire, fire, won't burn, stick, stick, won't beat, dog, dog, won't bite, pig, pig, he won't get over style, shan't get home to... No! Cat went, all right, all right, all right. Go to the cow, get me a saucer of milk. I'll catch you, rat, she went to the cow, said, look, I haven't got time to explain. These children have got to get to bed or get their tea or eat or something. I've got to get to the end of this story. Just give me a saucer of milk. Cow said, fine, go to the haystack and get me an armful of hay. She went to the haystack. Fortunately, haystacks can't speak. She just, now this is where you unmute yourself and join in. She grabbed an armful of hay and she gave it to the cow. The cow gave her a saucer cow. of milk. She gave the saucer milk. of milk to the cow. Rat. Rat. Cat. Rat. Oh, cat. Cat. You no, know, you know what happened then? The cat began to catch the rat. rat. The rat began to gnaw the rope. The rope began rat. to hang the no. butcher. Butcher began to kill the ox. 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 ox began to drink the water. Water, water began water. to put out the water. Fire. Fire. Fire began to burn the. Stick. 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 Stick began to beat the Stick. Dog. 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 Share that dog. memory cell, Mike. Right. <laughs> okay. The dog began to bite the Big. 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 And it was so frightened Big. it got straight over the stile. And the old woman, she got home that night. No. Well, thank you for listening. You have been a brilliant audience. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Jasnami. Thank you, Kamea. Thank you, Louis. And of course, all those wonderful adults that refuse to grow up. We love you all. Aidan, Mike, Teresa, Cass, and anyone else that's been around, and anyone listening elsewhere. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Ali, for driving, for flying the magic carpet around the world. We had to, we, tonight, we were in Morocco with Ali.
Nepal with Kamar. I never remember which, but we'll just say the UK with Kath. Because <laughs> you're, 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 you're near the Welsh border, aren't you, Kath? <laughs> Are you north, south, east, west? Midlands. Midlands. I knew, that. Middle. I knew that. You're near Litchfield Way, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I knew that. Uh, Northamptonshire. The Fens or Peterborough. Peterborough? Louis, are you Stamford or Peterborough? Stamford. 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 That's where the Antiques Road Trip ended up tonight. Anyway, that's something. And, and Baden, Baden, in, uh, Baden, we're never sure where Baden is. He, he, he claims he's in London and working, but we're never sure. So, yes, Name and Erica in India. So, for all, thank you very much for joining us. We've got loads of good stuff coming up on the cafe on Sunday night at six o'clock. We have okay. Doric Frolics fro fro with uh, uh, Pauline Cordner and um, someone else. Uh, normally, when I'm not doing my own set, I have all this in my head. <laughs> anyway, look it up on the site. And of course, on Tuesday at five o'clock in the evening, we have our weekly Young Tellers, of which we have two of our stars, three of our stars here tonight, Kamau, Jasname and Erica. So we'll see you all on Tuesday night. Please come along to support them. Meanwhile, thank you very much and good night. Thank you, thank John. You, John. Thanks, Ali. Thank Bye, you, John. everyone. Good night. Bye, Have guys. a lovely John. evening. Bye. Everybody, good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good thank you. Good thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, anyone. Thanks, Bobby. John, I enjoyed all of your stories and poetry too. Thank you, Jasname. So, fantastic. John, you have told awesome stories. Yeah, I, well, I, I yeah. Mind how to make a story. Well, we we might do one. We might, I might do a workshop one one uh, one of one uh, Friday night where we make up a all, all make up a story together. Should we do that for a children's yeah. night? The next time, the next time I'm on on a children's night, which might be a few weeks time, we'll all make up a story together, and all the children can put stuff in, and we might even let the adults put your line in. Uh, oh, only when oh. we get only when we get stuck <laughs> <laughs> okay good night everybody lovely Bye, thank you good night everybody bye, bye. 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 bye.